Hi everybody, I'm Oliver Hines, aka Darmel from the London Ramble.com. And I'm very happy to say we're with Ryan Combs from Sawyer. How you doing, Matt? Good. Good stuff. How's the tour been going so far? It's been real good so far. This is be uh, tonight will be the third night of the tour here in the UK, but we did a, uh, some dates over in Europe first, mm -hmm. and those went really well. So we're just uh, we're glad to be here in the where I get my my daily donner, my daily uh, chicken kebab. And uh, oh, chilled up on yeah, English right. mustard and, yeah. and, and uh, Walker's bacon and smoky bacon crisp. So I'm happy to be here right now. See, if I'd have known you like that so much, I would have brought down a set of marshmallows and crackers. Yeah, yeah. There's. <laughs> you seem to have quite a strong uh, fan base here in the UK, and it seems to have been that way ever since Scars came out. I can remember. Yeah, absolutely. It's not very blessed. I mean, just. From day one here, mm -hmm. uh, the, the first show we ever did over here was sold out, mm -hmm. and it's been that kind of love and support from day one. It's been, uh, in a lot of ways, it's like you know, you always want to say that it's like home away from home. But in a lot of ways, when it comes to musically, I mean, it's been more of a home for us than, than a lot of the areas back in the states. So yeah. it's always, I always say that it's like as soon as I leave, I can't wait to get back. Okay. You know, when you're over here and you're doing a you know a month long tour or whatever, and you're away from home for that long, you're kind of like ah, I'm ready, to, you know, I'm ready to go home or something. But as soon as I get home, it's like, okay, when are we going back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. Obviously, the latest album Hole has been out for three years now. How would you say that that's settled in with the rest of the soil catalog? How do you feel it stacks up? You know, when we were recording it, I think there's a lot of conscious, you know, a lot of questioning. I know there was for me, like, you know, is this going to be soil enough? Is this enough like the old soil yeah. for the Dire Hard fans from back in my first run with the guys? Yeah. And, and then after a while, I was just kind of like, you know what, you got the, Adam was always the, the main music writer. Mm -hmm. Tim, if, if there was a song, there was always, you know, a song or two from each album that Tim was responsible for. Mm -hmm. And so you had, musically, you had 99.9% .9 of the, the music writing was right there in those two guys. Yeah. And um, and then I wrote all the lyrics, and if I didn't, if I ever had any question with lyrics, I would say something to Adam, and Adam would not necessarily have lyrics, but he'd be like a pattern. You know, he'd be like, this is what I hear, no, 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 if you give me one of those things, I'd be like, as soon as he gave me that pattern, all of a sudden I'd start going in the right direction. So you had the music, you had the lyrics of all the old stuff. So after a while, it's kind of like, you know, I just need to quit worrying about this. It's going to be what it is. And then uh, the response we got was great. People said, this is the album that should have been after Redefine. Yeah. And that was good to hear because there was, there was definitely some conscious concern. Yeah. Well, I remember um, when Shine On got released just before the album came out. That's so long. Speaking of the <coughs> success of the Redefine and such, obviously you were away from the band for quite a while. This might be a stupid question, but how does the album's true self and Picture Perfect stand with Soil today? Do they still get revisited, or is that just...? This is the first tour um, since I've been back that we are doing a song from each one of those albums. Okay. So I've been back now since I don't know when. Um, but this is the first tour that we pulled some tracks out from either one of those records. And um, it wasn't really, you know, I, mean, I think it was a combination of those guys were just kind of like, you know what, well, it ain't that era anymore. And for me, I've never been a big fan of singing somebody else's. I know it sounds funny coming from the guy that was with Drowning Pool for seven years, but I was, I've never, I was never in a cover band. No. Um, before like, being an original band. I went straight from learning how to play an instrument to being in original bands. Mm. And uh, I don't have the ability, I have a hard enough time remembering my own lyrics. <laughs> so retaining somebody else's has never been a, a strong point of mine. So uh, I, I didn't necessarily want to learn songs no. that I didn't know or didn't have anything to do with, and they never asked me to. So it just never came up. But on this tour, um, we decided to go ahead and pull out a couple and then, you know, there's there's fans of those albums. Yeah. So, oh my. 
finally it, it, it came time to go ahead and pull some some couple of those tunes out and, and, and give you know, give the fans a little taste of, the, of that era. That's good. That's good. Uh, so we've spoken about the most recent album. Now it's the successor to Redefine spiritually. Anyway, um, in terms of an actual successor to Hulk, how far are you with the writing process for the new album? You know, I we started writing uh, just about a month, mm -hmm. a month before we left to come here to do this. Because really, we don't know what we're going to do yet, but we know we're going to do something. I mean, it's going to be 20th year anniversary of, of the band next year. Yeah. We, we formed in 2097, uh, no, 1997. And uh, two weeks after we were together as a band, we landed our first independent record label, with, uh, Olympic Records was the name of it. From them, um, people that know the history of the band, we bounced from independent label to independent label to finally signing up with, with Jay. So we st we originally got signed in '97, mm -hmm. and uh, it was actually two EPs and a full length that came out before Stars ever hit the shelves. I remember trying my best to find a copy of Rock Junkies. It was just impossible. Yeah, um, it, it, and and I don't mind that it's hard because I'm not a big fan of that album. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me yesterday before the show, I was like, you guys are playing new stuff tonight. I was like, stuff you haven't played before live. I was like, yeah, I mean, is, uh, anything from Thought Junkies? I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> it's cool that people like that, though, man. It's, it's, and for us, I think there's probably, I haven't listened to it in, in probably a decade or more. Um, there's probably some, some cool tunes on there, but. The, the recording process was such a nightmare that I think everybody just kind of everybody that was involved in the recording process has just kind of like forgotten. We put a little block on that era of, of, of that that moment in time. Well, um, as you mentioned, there you're playing some songs you haven't played before, uh, not just the um, True Self and Picture Perfect eras, but in general. Um, and part of that, I believe, is because Saliva had to pull out on this tour. Yeah. So you've had to extend your set. Um, what kind of things can we expect from that? Are we going to see an acoustic, perhaps, version of Obsession or something like that? Tonight? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we we pulled out a couple songs, like I said, a couple songs from the albums that I wasn't a part of originally. And, uh, we are, we got a couple other tracks that we've, we got another track that we, from Holt that we've never played live. Okay. Uh, they did a, it was like the first thing they released, they did a lyric video for a song called uh, Amalgamation. Yeah. And so we, we pulled that out and uh, it's one of the songs, when I wrote that song lyrically, I wrote it, there's so many fucking words to it, <laughs> that I, it was one of the songs where you write it and you go, okay, never pull that one off live. Yeah. And so finally, different ones have written this and stuff, you know, oh, you guys played Amalgamation this time, whatever, throughout the years. And so it was like, finally, I was like, you know, if you guys want to play Amalgamation, I can give it away. Yeah. So, you got that one going in there, like I said, it's almost from the albums I wasn't a part of, and we've got some tracks that we haven't played in years and years that we've added to the set, just changing it up, and uh, giving the fans a good little smattering of, of all the old albums. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, obviously one song that pretty much has to be played at every show is Halo. It's like soil, really? Soil's Ace of Spades or Power yeah. Berry or something like that. I wish it was cool to ace of spades. I was, um, I, you're going to feel old, I was 12 when that song came out. Thanks. And that was like ace of spades for me and my friends. That was just, well, I appreciate that song. It, it's crazy for me because I'll get friends from over here will send me videos just randomly like, mm -hmm. every once in a while. And, uh, Way more often than I would think, but like they're just they're randomly meeting out at a bar somewhere, and somebody plays, they you know, and I'm mean, sorry, Halo, you know, it's and cool. it's and it's it's cool to see that that song is still something, you know. Yeah. Well, um, I see you mentioned you're in Drowning Pool for a bit, but I know that in between that you were working in an extreme sports shop, was it? We had things. We were we were building an extreme sports park. We had like oh. 500 acres of uh, motocross track, paintball facilities, indoors, outdoors, uh, oval track, dirt track for like the wing sprints and midgets, and uh, you name it. We had we had it being built, and uh, 
I, then I ended up joining Drowning Pool and got away from that for a little bit. And uh, yeah, ended up all day. I had a fun time doing it. They, they were great albums. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that. And if, to me, if. Um, well, I bet the park didn't work out. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, my time with Drowning Pool, we had a great time. It, just, it ended up being just, I have a seven year itch thing. Mm -hmm. I was with Drowning well, I was married for seven years. The relationship I was in before my marriage lasted seven years. I was with Soil for seven years. I was with Drowning Pool for seven years. Yeah. So there's something about seven years in me. It's like after seven years, I'm like, okay, so you need something different. <laughs> so, and you returned to Soil in 2011? Yeah. Okay, so 2018, it's going to go tits up again. Right, right. Tim, <laughs> it wasn't too long ago. Tim looks at me and goes, so we got two more years. What do I do? <laughs> Uh, speaking of years left, obviously the um, big story at the moment is the American presidential election. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the result? Happy. Yeah. I'm not a Trump fan. No. I think that's the thing that a lot of people get, like when I'm happy about the election, I think the thing people think is, oh, he's a Trump fan. No, I'm no. not. No. But you know what? The government. He is not a lifelong politician. He's not a career politician. No. He may not talk like a polished politician. Yeah. He talks like you and I. Yeah. He talks like a guy talking. Yeah. He uses words like them and they, and then people want to turn around and say he's being racist or whatever. <laughs> he's just, he's not a polished career politician. <laughs> and do I think he's great? No, not at all. But compared to the criminal he was running against, yeah. I couldn't be happier for the country. Yeah. Because that was that was an evil, evil woman. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very happy with the result. Yeah, I mean I'm not saying if I was an American citizen, I don't know if I could vote. It would be, I, 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 I hate the fact that I didn't. Yeah. I didn't I moved just before this tour. Oh. And I forgot to set up the whole uh, I forgot to basically it was too late for me to register my new location. Uh, so I didn't end up voting. If I would have, I would have voted the way I can't believe it ended up the way it did. No. I thought I thought Trump would win the popular vote. Yeah. But she would win the electoral college votes yeah. and end up being president. It ended up being just the I just I got blown away by the results. But I think I know a lot of people are scared because especially overseas the the Democratic Party has controlled the, the media in the US for the past eight years. They only let, you know, um, I've seen, you know, I, I hear a lot of the opinions um, outside of the United States and even with them, but I can tell that it's coming from the same networks, the same media sources that, that I guess I have to just start watching as well. Home as well. Um, but if you really break down, there's so much, he's this and he's that, and he's finally something. Mm -hmm. Find me something other than somebody saying that about him. Find me something that actually comes from him. And that's where the argument stops. Mm -hmm. But uh, but like I said, I'm not a big supporter of him, mm -hmm. but I would I would have voted on Satan himself over here. Like, <laughs> not that they're necessarily different. No, no, it would that but still, <laughs> I still would have taken Beals ball over Hillary Clinton. <laughs> okay. Uh, getting back to the, the band. Uh, one thing I've always noticed about you in particular is that you use a ribbon mic or a ribbon mic design. Right. Uh, what's special about that design to yourself? You just think it looks cool. It's not holding a penis shape off. That'd be fun. No, um, this goes way back. The first band I ever started singing with was a band called DEM out of Indiana. Yeah. And um, one of the first shows we ever did, we called him out was a, a battle of the bands thing at some high school, some local high school around there. And the guy that ended up, he was a, a good friend of mine at the time, he ended up being with us from, well with me from those days, to he ended up being Soil's uh, drum tech and stage manager for my entire first uh, run with, with the band. Still a dear friend of the band today. Um, he found an original, the old 55 mic that I used, he found one of the originals at the, at the school and 
and helped himself to it, I should say. And ever since then, I've used those types of mics. And I, every once in a while, something will go wrong and get stuck having to use a regular mic. And it feels so foreign, <laughs> so weird. Because I'm you know, you're used to holding one thing, next thing you know, you get Debbie does Dallas dildo. It's weird. <laughs> so, is there anything that feels different about being in soil since you've returned? Was it? We don't sweat the, the small crap. We used to, I, you know, I think that was one of the problems with the early on is we're all so new to it that everything stresses out. And I think given the years, we realize there's just some things you can't do a damn thing about. So don't, don't lose sleep over it. And, you know, back in the day, we, we'd get upset about something. The next thing you know, you're blaming each other about it. And because you're just frustrated, you're stuck on a bus with each other. And you're the only ones that can, you can bounce your anger off of. Yeah. Nowadays, it's just kind of like, hey, let's go, let's go have a show. Yeah. yeah. So we, you know, before every show, we don't go. You know, go have a show. Go have a show. Let's right? go do our thing. And uh, and we're, it's amazing that we're, we're blessed enough to still be able to do that. That people still allow us to do this. Yeah. And so just go do your thing. Let's just you know we'll have some drinks afterwards and have a good time. We'll have some laughs. Because so. back in the day, we were all stressed out and <laughs> shit. I mean, it gets to a point where you think I'd enjoy a rock and roll band to worry about. Smudge. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I think uh, a tech one time was showing another guy the ropes, a new kid. Yeah. And it was his first time out on the road. And he goes, the one thing I want you to learn right off the bat, it isn't what the poster looks like. Mm -hmm. And I love what he said right there. It isn't, the, the, you know, the, it isn't all about those four or five guys in that posed picture or the, yeah. that poster, you know. It's all the work that takes place before the show, all the work that takes place over the phone, dealing you know, with managers and booking agents and, and uh, financial managers and awesome. just, well, <laughs> <laughs> but there, I mean, then there's so many personalities that you're dealing with on daily, just within your own band and with the crew that you have with you and everything, but it's, it isn't, it isn't what the poster looks like. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. Oh, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I can't wait for the show. Oh, I'll wait for 15 years. Oh, it's about time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Right.